It's uh, seven o'clock. I'd like to call the regularly scheduled um, Merlin Select Board meeting to order. To my left is Pete Kelly, Wayne Lamberton. To my right is Jeremy Hansen and Angelina Caprom. And also with us is uh, Dana Hadley, our town administrator, and Diane Isabel, the town treasurer. Um, any additions or changes to the uh, agenda, Dana? I do have a few changes. I would like to remove from the other schedule, from the schedule, the transitional return to work program policies. Um, I thought that would be ready. It's not quite, but I will be talking to you about it in my report. Um, I would like to remove the bid opening for bids on the Trailblazer because I did not receive any. Mm -hmm. Um, and I would like the liquor board to meet at the end of the meeting to approve a catering license application. Okay. Uh, any, is that it, Dan? That's it, yeah. Any public comment? Hearing none, treasurer's report, Diane? Yep. Okay, I went to a class called Asset Management. I talked to you about that. It was in April. And actually, it was, it was a very good class. Um, it was talking about, I was looking I was looking more at the water system, but it was talking about looking at all your assets individually. For instance, we have like 38 hydrants. Where are they? You should start tagging them. So they gave us uh, different templates to work with, and we worked in groups, and it was very, very helpful. And I've already put together some of the information, and it's just a way of tracking your stuff. Um, when it, you know if it were to fail, uh, keeping track of when things fail, and and ways to different ways of keeping track of things and reporting things, and also uh, as far as breakdowns, you know, learning to to work with that, um, like who is going to be responsible for fixing certain things and make, make sure that everybody that's involved needs to be. You know, needs to communicate with each other. So all these things were very, very helpful to me. Uh, they do have another class that's going to be in June, and that will be mostly on repairs. But I did feel that it was quite helpful for, you know, for me. And they're talking maybe this fall that they might have one on financing alone that would be most helpful. This was put on by the league? I know this was put on by the state. So it was really good. Okay, that's all that I have for this. Tom's going uh, with you to the next one, isn't Correct. It? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, on the water system, Dana, are the are the hydrants uh, GPS? I'm, I don't know the answer to that. Um, they're obviously there right now because it's a new system. We have very good records of where they are. Yeah, um, I could speak to Tom and see about the GPS. Fire, but I think we have the culverts have already been. <clears throat> I think they have been. GPS. They have been by the. We just had a study done last year, um, was last year the year before that they were done by the regional planning uh, commission. I wonder if they were taking a look for the hydrant. I'll speak with Tom about it. Maybe he knows more about it than I do. I mean, w one thing that. Diane was really lucky because all of our things are known. It's all you know, there. a lot of these places yeah. are yeah. existing systems that they've built on over a number of years, and people are realizing that you lose history once people start retiring or, yeah. or leaving and things like that. So, and Diane has really um, taken the bull by the horns and is starting to maintain a record yeah, system, a spreadsheet which is that pretty. I think the only thing that I really need to do is to uh, assign numbers to them, and if we can tag everything, yeah, number. yeah, and that's that would be the next step. But I have everything else is on the spreadsheet that I know where the locations are. I've even taken a map, and I pinpointed where the hydrants are and where the gate valves are. And the valves, yeah. Yep. Okay, then uh, approval of licenses, permits, vouchers, and applications. I think I think Angeline's still looking. Yeah. Okay. Um, nothing else? Uh, no. Nope. Okay, thank you. Just on the agenda with that. Yeah. yeah. Um, the 2018 swim program. Yeah, if I could speak to that. Sure. Um, of course, we do. We tend to do that every year. Uh, last year, we spent $775. We paid $25 per child. We had 31 children. Um, there, I've talked with Sonia Parton, and she's thinking maybe we, if we could go to 1,000 this year. We're hoping to get more children involved. 
the lessons per child, and they are being held in Montpelier, are $52.50. The parent pays $27.50, and the town's been paying $25. So I think that's. And this is a for a program. week or two weeks? I think it's a week. I think it's a week, yeah. 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 And we sent our kids was up here at uh, what was Wedgwood. Wedgwood, yeah. And they yeah. don't offer that anymore. Right. Montpelier offered it last year. They're offering it this year, from what I understand, the same price per child. Um, so I guess what we're looking at is maybe a thousand dollars. We'd like to just put that as a number to, you know, we don't want to exceed that if we can. But I think that we'd like to think we'll get more than 31 kids. If we could get 40 kids, that would be a thousand dollars. I think we brought it to you because the rec committee isn't that active right at the moment. Um, but there's still going to charge per child. Correct. Yeah. Well, well, yeah, but didn't it say we're just going to get one bill from Montpelier as opposed to reimbursing each family? Right. I made that note to Sonia. Yeah. Sonia and I talked right. about that. And We've I said, had this that is discussion, and I worked that out with Montpelier last year that we would pay them directly. Right. Yeah. So we're not yeah. making a whole bunch of checks. Correct. Right. Yeah. I told Sonia that's yeah. going to be the way it is. And she's a volunteer and has really done oh, a nice job with excellent. it. Oh, she's excellent. Yeah. Yes. Give me a motion. <clears throat> um, we would like a motion just to, we wanted you to be aware of it, and if you want to do a motion, that would be great. I'll move to approve uh, an expenditure up to $1,000, which will be charged per child um, to the swim program. Second. Any other discussion? Do, do we want to say 25 per child? Or just yeah, 25 per child up 25. to a yeah. total of 1000 any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? The ayes have it. Abandoned properties, Daniel? Okay, I know we talked about this before, but I am going to bring it up again because I am having a hard time with some of the properties because they don't sell at tax sale. And um, I've got one. I've got actually quite a few of them here. But I've got uh, one that was just land only that was on Bartlett Hill. And I haven't brought it back to tax sale because it didn't sell the first tax sale. I don't know if it will. If nobody bid on it the first time, why would they bid on it now? And there's even more money involved. Uh, and also, we had the one that was on Muzzy Road, and that one's really you know, climbing up there. We're not charging any taxes in 2017 because it's something we'd agreed on. However, there's still interest on the back taxes. And I just don't know where else to go with these. I've also got three abandoned mobile homes uh, that are still on our, on our books. They've been pulled off the lot. They were all at Lagoo. He's pulled them off the lot, and he's got them in a field somewhere. I just don't know what else to do with these. I, I can't really go after them. You know, they're, they're not selling. You know, what is the next step here? We had talked last, I guess it was last year, mm -hmm. yeah. um, about maybe the town might be interested in bidding on them. Um, what brought this to light this time was I had a gentleman who was talking about that property that we're familiar with out on Route 12 that was damaged by the flood and has been abandoned. He asked if I could send highway over and get rid of the old stuff on the lawn. I'm not comfortable doing that um, because it doesn't belong to us. Um, but in other communities, and again, it's a money, it's a money issue, but they might bid on these properties and then either tear them down or do something to get them so they're not a blight anymore. But, but you at least have the ability to go in then and do something and, about and it. And we certainly could, you know, in that case, <clears throat> and again, it's the process, the legal process, Diane, I, I still have to bring explain it, it to me again, but um, I can't really send the, the crew over there to do anything because it's not ours. Um, but I understand since I've been here anyway, it's not gotten any better. Right. Um, <coughs> is, a year and a half ago, I looked at that property. This is yeah. one, yeah. But can, can it be condemned as a safety hazard? So therefore, then you go, or is it just as, is that just as much trouble as just a visit? Well, the, and usually you'd work with an owner, but we don't Isn't have that cooperation. Um, we think we know where the owner is, but we aren't able to connect because with who would be If it does get condemned, who is actually going to be responsible then? The town, the at any town. rate, I mean, it's going to boil down to it's going to cost us money to mm -hmm. do something. Whether we buy it and tear it down, 
um, I wouldn't even think you could have the fire department burn it anymore. It's not, it's mm. probably things there that you don't want to happen. But it is a blight. Um, I agree with the gentleman who was concerned about it. Um, but I can't send anyone, any of the crew over to do anything. Um, I think the owner won't sell it for a dollar. Uh, yeah, I think the owner is financially. I think it's just. What I understand is disabled. Yeah, it, it's a sad. <clears throat> Do we know if there's, uh, well, no bank has stepped forward? I know that, yeah, TD Bank has a mortgage on it, and I talked to them as a, you can pay a taxes, and they said, no, no we're not going to do that. So, so if <clears throat> an individual went to tax sale and purchased it, they'd have to clear the title? No. No. Okay. If we sell it tax sale, then the mortgage company, too bad. No. Have to write it off. Yeah. They'd have to write it off. Yeah, if it goes to the tax sale. We have the first. And they do not you know. come forward to, to take care of yeah. their interest. If they choose, and this happens, yeah. if they choose that it's not worth their finances or, or if they choose not to. Yeah. Either that or they, during the redemption period, can buy The lien becomes. Yeah. And I've seen where Boy. during the redemption period they. I don't think that's going to be the case here. And I can understand why they're not going to pay the taxes. Right. You know. So the process would be to have another tax sale, but the town... It is another... Yeah, well, I've talked to the, our ter town attorney about it, too, and he's saying the first thing you probably do is go to the Board of Abatement, get the taxes abated to a level that maybe it might sell a tax sale, but if it doesn't, then you bite the bullet and... Well, we have gone and not... We're not accruing any more taxes on it. No, but we still have interest on the past due. Exactly. Can't, I can't write that. I have to get that abated. Exactly. So that's just a matter of going to the board of abatement. Yeah. So I, I guess I'm not looking for decision now, but I guess I'm looking for thoughts. And if you think about it, maybe we'll bring, I can bring it up in another couple meetings or something. How many abandoned properties are there? I've got three mobile homes, more, but just yeah. there's two. There's one that's land only, and there's one I'm going to see with it. So that's really all. There's some that I will be bringing up to tax sale, and one of them is a piece of property. But I think that I might be able to sell it to tax sale. Then I have a home that, you know, I don't know if that's going to, you know, what's going to happen with that because I know there's a mortgage on it. Mr. Lambert? Yes, I have a comment. Um, Green Lantern Solar is actively looking for small parcels of land uh, to, in, to build um, projects on between two and six acres. Um, and we are rehabilitating brownfields, garbage dumps, toxic waste areas, quarries, pits. Can it be a hill with a lot of trees? We can look at it. And I, I would like to look at it. Okay. Uh, because we, we pay taxes on the lots. Right. Okay. No, but that's good to know. That would so, be our goal. Yes. <laughs> yeah, can you get in touch with me? Because if I can bring uh, it back to tax sale, I will. Yes. But there's fees always involved. I hate to bring yeah. something up if I can't sell it. Let, let, let me contact you tomorrow. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry. Yes. 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 You've been charged. <laughs> so if you have any direction that you want us to go in, with that. Any other uh, thoughts? Well, I, I think up on Route 12, I, I don't think we have the luxury of just sitting around and hoping for it to resolve. Right. Because no. it's not, I mean, it's not, it's, it's not, not going to resolve if we don't. Yeah. So I, I, I think we have to proceed with the tax sale and try to Again? Okay. Do, do something with mm -hmm. it. And then can we, to the process, if we had, an, if we went to the Board of a Bay, got the taxes reduced, mm -hmm. put it up for tax sale, it didn't sell. Can we, as a town, then decide to I, Well, I think that you have to decide at the tax sale if you're going to buy it or not. I, That's don't, what think I, was you, I don't think you can wait till after. Right. So yeah. before the tax sale, we need to make a decision as to right. what we mm -hmm. are willing If you to do. are, yeah. That's why we always, I always bring it up before there's a tax sale, I'll show you all the different properties. It would be nice to get a <clears throat> cost as to what it would cost to take that. How would you? Would uh, you I can do that. that. You would yeah, there's any of the any of the uh, construction. Yep. Yeah. I, I think that's a great that's idea. That's a good idea. Well, it'd be nice to know what it's going to cost to make it. 
Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And by the time, I mean, we're going to have time to figure that out because this is a process for the tax sale. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. Because I've, I've already got tomorrow. a batch going, but that might be in July. Then my next batch will probably end up being like yeah. in August. If you, if you did, if you did test the paint and the asbestos and take the shingles off the roof, you could have the fire department do a test burn. But the concern that I have. As I, I remember, is there's a brook running right next right. to it. I'd be kind of afraid. Those other houses pretty close. Yeah. Yeah. In some ways, to even have someone work on it, it doesn't yeah. look safe to me. Yeah, I can't change. tell you that couch in the front of the house is kind of gone. <laughs> All right, I'll get a price on mm -hmm. demolition. It's a great place for solar panels. <laughs> Well, how, how big is the lot? It's only that lot's not even an acre. Yeah, it's 0.33. Yeah, it's One small. big solar panel. <laughs> yeah. 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 I think but it'd be great for well, the, the land. Well, the land, I think, is an acre. No, it's 0.33. Yeah. Yeah. No, 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 I'm talking about the land on Bartley Hill. Oh, Bartley Hill, yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm in a yeah. different location. No, no, I knew the other one was seven acres. Yeah. Is that it? That's it for me. Okay, thank you, Diane. Tim was going to be here, but I have not heard from him. I know he was had a few issues today, so I you're stuck with me. Um, as you know, Merrill Lake. I'm happy to tell you that we received a structure grant for Merrill Lake Road. That we will be getting a structure grant for that, so we'll have to. It was a two hundred eight thousand dollar cost to fix Mirror Lake Road. We'll have to pay twenty percent of that and the grant will pay the remaining 80. Um, and obviously, most of the cost of this is the permits, et cetera, that you need to work over there. What I wanted Tim to tell you, because he's more familiar with that, that we did look into buying um, a piece of steel that we could put over. The, um, he would have to buy two pieces of steel. Um, and it would be about $5,000. And Tim has concerns that even at that, the erosion keeps moving yeah. back. Yeah. And it's, you know, it doesn't seem to be a viable option. To, so it's supposed to be short term. <laughs> yeah, fix it with that. I mean, you know, I'm afraid that it would erode and end up in the pond. Well, nobody's going through there now anyway. So, right. so I, yeah, I, and so I, it's not going to be a fast thing, but. Um, he was just going to mention it, you about the plates. The grant one is that one with that. It's a it's for FY um, their year nineteen, and so if we started to, we can do it any time, but we're not going to get the money until between July of this year and June of next. So, so if we did the job this fall. So if we if we do the job this <laughs> fall. I mean, once we get all the paperwork that has to be done and go back and forth, we'll probably end up getting the money in the spring within the same fiscal year. That's the goal anyway. Obviously, we have to forward, we have to front the money. Mm -hmm. um, so is the, are the piles there now more for a blockade or is that for temporary repair purposes? That's so people don't drive It's through. just a blockade. Right. Huh? Yeah. So after the 80% from the state, our share would be about 40 grand. Something like that. Oh, well, that's good news. <laughs> so what is the permanent solution? That's the permanent solution. That to, replace, okay. to replace the culvert needs to be replaced. It's a culvert that is on the south end of Berlin Pond on Mirror Lake Road. Mm -hmm. The culvert is disintegrated. Yeah. Um, and at one point in time, we could have gone over, dug a hole, and put in a culvert in, but you can't do that with the pond, and you have to get permits, and there's a process you go through, and uh, and it's an expensive process. Oh, okay. So, so are you suggesting you're not going to do the temporary? I would say not to do the temporary. You, I mean, you you would pay five thousand bucks, in five thousand dollars. Maybe you could sell it when you were done, but it's Tim didn't think it was safe to even do that. Okay. So it's closed for a while. Yeah. Until next year. Yeah. 
I would fix. Okay. So <clears throat> if the engineering is done and the permitting comes through, do you think it's worth doing the job this fall? Yes. I would want to do it in the second half of the fiscal year anyway. Mm -hmm. To so we get the funding before the end of the fiscal year. <clears throat> well that's yeah, frankly. <clears throat> Because we've been in that situation before that we haven't gotten funding in the same fiscal right. year and it, mm -hmm. <coughs> it makes it a little so I think murky. I, I, what is, where are we with our engineers at this point? Um, I, I've sent them an email and said that we have a grant and go forward and he's, he's moving forward. Okay. So it'd be interesting to hear whether they think that we could have all permits in place so that we can start. I can certainly ask John to come in. It'd be nice to know if we could start yeah. in September. Yeah. Right. I would love for it. But, I mean, the sooner the better. Just knowing that the box cover is going to take if, six months. If you yeah. ordered the box cover now, you probably going to have it in August. Yeah. Well, the thing of it is, of course, is the, uh, the overall timing of the uh, engineering and everything else. How long it going to take to get permits? Right. I'm just wondering if this is another case where the town will need to buy the box cover up front. Because if we wait and put this out to bid when we have the permits, we won't get a box holder for this year. Yeah. Well, the told me to just get it in motion because they know permits are going to take a while. Yeah. So the thing to do would be to take and get the engineering report done so we know what kind of a culvert we need and go from there. Yeah, and to apply for all the permitting that's needed because that is what's going right. to take the time. But it's not uncommon these days yeah. for a town or a municipality to pre-purchase the box culvert. Sometimes the contractor then takes over that purchase over and buys the culvert. But sometimes the town just supplies the culvert and says this is where it was manufactured. But they just take so long and of course in Vermont there's six months to put them all in. So yeah. it's get in line. And, yeah, then, exactly. and we are going to have to put the money out front and then get reimbursed. Right. So we'll have to give ourselves a loan, basically. Right. Yeah. Anything else on this? Um, Green Lantern Group proposal for solar. Robert is here. Come on up, Robert. Um, Last, at last meeting you had, um, I guess we met with you two meetings ago. Um, and we had, I think we needed some more time to look at the agreement mm -hmm. and so forth. I did receive some comments from the attorney that I'd like to share with you. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I think nothing was very surprising. Um, I think the one of the comments that has come to light is we have a potential project of, of eliminating a lift station, as, as you know, um, the Shaw's lift station. Right. You had given, you had updated the figures for me, not Ooh, using right. that lift yes. station. However, we have the lift station at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, one of the comments was, if we start the agreement with that lift station, um, and then we take it offline, what are the ramifications of that? Because in the contract, I think he says, we could designate another meter within the utility service area with the same level of uses as a replacement, but mm -hmm. we probably wouldn't have another. The only one you got that, that I would suggest would be the fire department, the, the volunteer fire department, mm -hmm. uh, which has, they're, they've got like a small bill that it runs 2,000, maybe And they have expressed dollars. interest in being part of this. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, but at this point, I don't think they've got, uh, they're, they're not ready to move. So, you know, that's a possibility. Um, I can't, I mean, to go to an investor, an investor wants to participate in this, and the investor makes it all possible. Uh, knowing that he has customers for what has been contracted, and therefore uh, deletions are um, a little dicey. Uh, I think it would probably, I, I think talking with the fire department to see if they intend to get involved or not, um, and deleting the meter um, would be the better course 
then um, making, trying to make an adjustment in the future, it becomes problematic. We would need to find an off taker, somebody to use the electricity right, that's what I mean. uh, for uh, a relatively small amount. Um, today I was in a position, I'm, I'm trying to find um, an off taker for about $200 a month in uh, net meter credits. I went to the Good Samaritan Haven. Wow, nice thing. But there you're giving it away. You know, somebody's paying, paying for it and making a charitable donation. You don't want to be in that circumstance. So are you suggesting that if the town were to go forward not to include the Shaw's pump meter, that, that would be perhaps the fire department could join in and use theirs? And it, well, we wouldn't be the same use, but... Right. The fire department is going to make its own decisions, and it's under its own management, right. and I don't think, you know, you should affect your agreement uh, for what they may or may not do. Um, if you chose to include Shaw's and Shaw's subsequently closed, the first place I would go uh, would be the volunteer fire department because they wouldn't have another net metering agreement in effect. You can only have one agreement. You can't, you can't you know, collect these things and, and have multiple sources. So the fact that they didn't do it now means that they would probably be available later. But it's more complicated than it's worth. Mm -hmm. What's the, the Shaw's pump usage? Um, it was 7400 yeah, 7440 yeah. you know, 740 bucks, roughly, um, that, you know, we're, we're foregoing uh, in savings. <coughs> I... I 7,400. You know, it's, it's likely that we would find another off-taker, but that's not what the contract says. There have been situations where uh, people have gone out of business, and we've worked with them to find a new off-taker. Mm -hmm. um, but whoever is the off-taker has to be acceptable to the people that invested the money. Right. Okay, well, that was a concern. So, yeah. I mean, that was yeah. a... I would a, say let it go. Certainly, yeah. Uh, you, you know, we, um, depending, depending on how things go, we, I mean, do you think you're going to lose the Shaw's pump? I would say yes. Yeah. Then, then I think right. that's the answer. Yeah. Um, there, another concern that was brought up um, is Green, Light, Green Lantern Development going to own the property where the project is? Depends. We lease it typically. Well, we, we, we typically don't buy it. It's going to depend on the economics. Okay. Um, the one that, that we had our concern, eye on, and I'm just mm -hmm. talking lawyerese yeah. here, yeah. Um, that the town ensures that the lease covers the same length that our agreement covers. Yeah, it does. Yeah. Actually, it probably covers longer. Probably more. Okay. Yeah, because I mean, there were two five-year extensions at the, at the back end that might be accommodated. Uh, I've seen, um, it's interesting, I mean, this, is a, this is a good time to talk about, you know, what we might be able to do with the town or some of these tax lien properties in the future. Uh, the property that this is going to be sitting on is about two acres, mm -hmm. and we're paying $2,000 a year with an escalator. Uh, I've seen other properties that, that would go, well, it's about $1,000 an acre per year. Uh, I saw one recently that was... Uh, five acres, and there was a $50,000 payment up front mm -hmm. to cover the entire lease. So, you know, lump sums are possible as well. Right. Uh, but the lease would definitely cover. We match, okay. we match that lease to All right. You know, I apologize to the board. I just got this today from Rob, so it's, I didn't, haven't had it. Mm -hmm. um, the other um, item that has come up in the past, it's a 20-year lease. Mm -hmm. We know what's happening in the first 10. Mm -hmm. The second 10, we don't. Mm -hmm. um, so well, you do. I mean, it, we're we're we we have a contract, um, and we <laughs> we've got a reputation in the community. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got some, something in the order of seventy million dollars invested in Vermont now. Um, but the um, and and I've shared actually with Wayne uh, the economics of these projects from the investor's perspective. Uh, and they continue to maintain profitability uh, throughout the entire term. Um, the attorney had no issue with your company. I mean, yeah. you know, in fact, it's it's a well-respected company yeah. and, and so forth. It's just these are items that he wanted yeah. me to. 
Yeah, I mean, you're, you're, you're working on our full faith and credit and our, our uh, ability to uh, adhere to the terms of the contract, but uh, that's what we have is that reputation and a profitable project. Mm -hmm. He mentions termination provisions should be clear and based on definite frames of the standard. Is that in the contract? I oh, well, I mean, ter termination of the contract? Yeah. Termination, termination provisions, he said, should be clear and based on definite time frames and standards. Well, there's a clause that... The that early termination right, right. Yeah. right. Um, should be provided to the town if GLD is unable to provide... Yeah, that's in there. Continue. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. Um, so those were his comments. <clears throat> Can you tell me how this is going to be affected by the net metering rate going down to 13 cents? Uh, it's not, because we have uh, the permitting uh, process on these projects has been completed, and we have the certificate of public good. Uh, I had a status meeting this morning on projects, went for two and a half hours, project after project after project. We're pumping them out, trying to get these CPGs all done before you know the new rules kick in. The new rules are not the end of the world. Mm -hmm. um, it, it reflects basically the reality of the solar world and basically what they're telling us uh, is, is that solar co is competitive with any other form of energy. Um, and that you know you shouldn't need to be um, uh, incented to that to the degree that you're not already incented by uh, the taxes and everything else that's associated uh, with it. But you know uh, this project will not be affected in any way. So back to Rob's comments, I think his reference is after ten years. What is your solar credit? Well, it's based on the same formula. It's, a, it's the same formula. Continuous. It's the same formula between us and you. Yeah. What is the power? They give, what, is the, what does GMP provide as a solar adder after 10 years? Correct. Nothing. Yes, the solar adders are, uh, if they're positive, and of course there's a solar adder which is negative, Correct. the solar adders which are positive uh, end after 10 years, the negative ones are forever. But uh, yeah, the uh, project the project will continue according to the formula that, uh, that we've established. So we're going to get a solar credit <clears throat> of we're going to get to buy power at the rate Greenmount Power charges in year eleven. Less a discount. Less a discount of ten percent. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what Rob's asking. Yeah, I mean, based, I think what he's saying is the first 10 years is a bit, you know, after the first 10 years, we're, we're obligated to stay in this contract for another 10 years. What would happen if another opportunity, the town would not be able to take advantage of another opportunity, whether it's there or not, probably wouldn't be, but I'm right. just, you know. Well, if we didn't pay, we'd be in breach. Right, uh, and I think we're just talking about, you know, yeah. um, if we get into it into year eleven and things change. All right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we would we would be willing to entertain letting you buy the contracts after some period of time. Um, most people don't do it. Yeah, I was going to say. Yeah. Right. Yeah. The credit, I suspect that would happen. The credit union yeah. did it. You know, the credit credit union uh, has a lot of money to invest, and these are good deals after ten years. Sure. Yeah. So why not? Um, well, we're obligated. We have to operate a little differently. All right, you know? of course, yeah. of course. But uh, no, I, you know, I, it, it, um, I think the fact, and, and I would be happy to share with you the pro forma so you understand why you're not buying this for cash, uh, as opposed to this that kind of I get. Bridge. There's a lot I don't get yeah. with this, but, but I get the back it. end, yeah. the back end, it's basically the all of the profit is driven by taxes in the first several years. And thereafter, you know, it's a, it's a modest rate of return. It's, it's like a bond. Mm -hmm. um, but it is profitable. I think we're just concerned is what is the power going to cost us. Yeah. Yeah, well, whatever Green Mountain charges, you get a discount. For 10 years. No, for 20 years. For 20 years. For 20 years. What was the negative? 
it doesn't apply here. If, you, if you've got a, uh, if you if you put a solar project on a beautiful field someplace, they will ding you. Um, they'll ding you for what they for add. Yeah, that yeah. would right. be a negative, but that doesn't apply here. All right. So those were what Rob had said, and I think we had talked about some right. of those before. Seem, I think we covered a lot of that. I mean, progress, progress is going to cost you risk or money, right? Somebody invented a car and thought it was a horrible idea. Well, you're in with good company um, because, you know, it would be the city of Montpelier, the city of Barry, and everybody else would be all over us as well. Do you have the actual thing that we're, that we're signing? That is... Um, I have a contract. Is that what we're... It's, it's, it's called a net metering agreement, and it will need to be altered slightly once we've got a once we have a commitment to proceed. We'll change it and put the name of the actual array in there. It's, you know, there's a whole bunch of arrays which are pretty much identical, but that one is like a placeholder because because they sell. Okay, so if, if you're saying that if the board decides. To vote in the affirmative tonight, mm -hmm. you would you would type up a new yes. agreement. Yeah, and be the same agreement with a with a couple with, of couple with small filling changes. in the blank yes lines. Yes. Mm -hmm. So I move that we declare our intent to proceed. <clears throat> I'll second it, and with discussion that we prepare the document you're looking for us to sign and let Rob voice his opinion one more time on his. Any concerns that he has with the opt out portion of the agreement? Mm -hmm. I want our attorney to be in sync with us, but I think that we That's fully want to do this. Minus the pump. <coughs> yeah. Right. Any other discussion on this? Um, could you clarify for me what you mean by opt out? Our attorney has a, had concerns about specifying how the termination of the contract. Goes and mm -hmm. I want our attorney. To, we're not going to overrule our attorney. We yeah. want him to. We want you guys to work out a contract. Sure, that's sure. what we're saying. I'm happy to talk with Rob. You know, we used to we used to work with him on other other matters. That's all I'm saying. I want I want him to be happy with our contract. And, and I, I think I think that's important. Yeah. yeah, I mean, we pay him to protect us. Yeah, right. Yeah, help us. Help us. Yeah. Help us. No. Any further discussion? Hearing none, those in favor? Aye. Aye. Well, those opposed? Ayes have it. So you'll go and get that tape work to me and I will follow yes. on? And, yes, and, I'll, uh, I'll, uh, I'll send you a clean contract um, with um, the revised data. Super. And um, send it to you by, uh, in a PDF or a document. Yeah. And we'll go for it. Thank you, very Thank you very much. And yeah, I will talk with Diane about those lots. You yeah. know, if we could find lots, even if they're a little hilly. Uh, if they're what a do you think away. about mobile homes, Robert? I think you could use them for your yeah, offices. Right. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> so I just thought I'd try. The Marlin Hill lot, so single phase line. Just single like. phase? Well, I can do 150 there. Right. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. Bye bye. Okay. Uh, Austin Rossetti. Berlin yes. I prepared a uh, short presentation. So, um, first, I want to say thank you for letting me come and speak. Thank you, Dr. Hansen, for inviting me. Um, so, I am a uh, about to graduate senior at Norwich University, and they have given me the opportunity to conduct um, research on my own this year, and so. For that research, I decided to um, look at Berlin Pond and the, the water quality. And um, for one person, looking at the overall water quality is a bit of a large project, especially given the time constraints that I was given. So I wanted to focus my search um, to something more specific, and I chose um, salt because you all know we get a lot of snow up here. So, um, and uh, with that snow um, comes salting the roads to make sure that they're safe. And, um, but the, the salt poses uh, risk to drinking water. And Berlin Pond being a drinking water reservoir, I know that it supplies Montpelier, but it's still drinking water nonetheless. Um, so I just wanted to kind of conduct some sort of study into how that roadway salt might affect the uh, drinking water quality. 
So I work with uh, Dr. Lori Gray, who's a professor of environmental science at Norwich University. And uh, she kind of advised me and mentored me through this project that I conducted this year. So um, part of the problem, as I've already kind of sort of talked about, um, comes from the roadway salt. And uh, Berlin Pond being such close proximity to Interstate 89, which is a major roadway, receives a lot of salt over the years. Um, it, it's within 150 feet of the pond. So um, all that salt that's applied over, over the winter, it, it keeps getting added and it gets plowed to the side and huge snow uh, uh, collection on the side. And in the springtime, when it comes time to melt, all that salt runs off with the water down the hill and into the pond. And it, it can affect the, uh, the salt concentrations in the water. So that was kind of the focus of my study here. Um, so what I did was, um, in the, I would have liked to have collected more samples, but my, uh, it had to be finished by late March. So there wasn't too many warm days, but on three specific days, I went down to the pond and collected water samples in close proximity to the highway, almost where that uh, concrete structure is with the, the intake, where it goes in. Um, so I collected water samples, and I brought it back to the university, and we used this device called an ICP, um, which takes the waters, or takes the water, and it um, uses plasma and argon in, to almost read small quantities of different contaminants and different elements within the water, and then it gives back the concentrations. And so uh, with those numbers, uh, fortunately the, the device gives us lots and lots of stuff, not just salt. And I was studying salt as sodium, because there's salt as sodium and salt as chlorine once it dissolves into the water. But um, so salt uh, is known to the EPA as a secondary water standard meaning that it is not toxic if consumed, if there's high levels in the water, but at certain points there can start to be health effects, but for the most part it's more of a quality of life, taste and appearance of the water. Um, there's also primary drinking water standards, and the key word for that, for what qualifies, is it's toxic to health. And so um, uh, this whole list of different elements um, and metals um, that were tested for, uh, salt is the only secondary one. But what was found was that the, the salt was within the EPA standards for what's considered safe for um, salt concentrations. Um, that concentration is 250 milligrams per liter, which is also known as parts per million. Um, the average concentration was found to be 13 parts per million. Um, but salt um, it has many health effects anything over 20 parts per million, it's required that there's an advisory uh, made to the public, which this is still not at that point. But um, speaking with uh, Professor Grigg, who has done extensive study in uh, other drinking water reservoirs in the area, she says that this is significantly higher than other bodies of water um, in the area, uh, which it typically is around two parts per million. So it's not so much something that's an immediate cause for concern, but it, it is noticeably higher than other water sources in the area. One other thing that was found were three contaminants in particular, um, arsenic, lead, and thallium. Those, le those are primary drinking water standards, which means that they are toxic to health. They were found to be above the EPA's um, allowable standards, which is required to, um, the water provided has to be below. And the issue is that um, there's a difference between a wastewater treatment facility and a water treatment facility. Um, being a drinking water reservoir, it goes through a water treatment facility which does not treat for a lot of these contaminants, where wastewater typically takes in sewage, and it's a lot more of an extensive um, treatment process. But um, it, this, the water from Berlin Pond does not go through a uh, treatment process quite as extensive as that. So these contaminants are not treated for in, the, in, in this case. And, um, I'll talk a little bit more about it. My, my goal here is not to cause like alarm or um, worry people, but just bring to the attention that th this is what I found. Um, and it, it is a little bit cause for concern. So uh, talking about the sodium levels, um, sort of like, like I discussed, anything above 20 parts per million is required to be an advisory, and the salt levels are significantly higher than other area reservoirs. So that is something to consider. Um, Kind of then looking at the other three contaminants, um, I did a little uh, research and further digging with 
uh, Professor Gray and several other professors at the university. And uh, now I use the term theoretical very loosely, but we came up with some theoretical sources of uh, where these contaminants are coming from to kind of identify what can be done to prevent this. And lead, um, the only thing that we can come up with is uh, the samples were collected near that outflow structure. And um, I'm not too sure exactly what it's made of inside, but typically those pipes are metal. And sometimes off the metal comes lead. And I, the, the flow is going the wrong way to suggest that, but that was what we were able to find. Um, as far as the arsenic goes, um, that is very typical among uh, in bedrock. And so if there's bedrock close to the surface, especially near a uh, water source, typically there's some uh, trace amounts of arsenic detected in the water. And as far as thallium, that was one that we were kind of uh, thrown a bit about. It's typically more common in uh, the Midwest, uh, like Texas or Kansas, where there's a lot of oil and metal production because it, it's a byproduct. It's, it's, uh, it's an exhaust of uh, metal production, mineral production, oil refining, and uh, cement making. Not, not the physical mixing of the concrete, but making the actual cement powder itself, which to my knowledge is not very common in this area. But um, some further research that um, I did, I looked a little bit into uh, methods that could be used to kind of act as a buffer, specifically for the salt. Um, and a couple studies were done at different parts of the country and in other countries where they used um, something called a dry detention pond, which is almost just like a cutout pond or culvert that um, it, it's empty in normal time, but when there's a lot of runoff, the water gets caught in there and then it infiltrates into the ground naturally instead of going directly into the water. So it almost acts as a bit of a buffer. And there have been cases where it's been found that it, it does help stop a lot of the salt specifically from getting into the water. Um, but given my time constraints here, uh, my study wasn't as developed as I would have liked it to be. And so um, one, one big thing uh, I've always been taught is that when conducting research, come up with ideas to continue the research and further develop it so that if someone else has opportunity, they can kind of expand off it. And um, so I think that a more in-depth study would definitely be necessary um, by who is, uh, and I know there's several environmental organizations out there that are very passionate about drinking water. I also know that uh, the university, um, every year they always look for, especially the civil engineering department, which I'm a part of, they look for different projects to, to kind of propose for senior capstones. So um, often if outside sources come to the civil engineering department in the university with ideas or proposals for research product projects, they're very receptive to um, putting a larger group of students on and uh, having them conduct this study. But I think that it's definitely worthwhile to look more into it and uh, recognizing that it's the drinking water source from Montpelier um, it, it would also be worth getting in touch with them, seeing what resources and uh, um, what they'd be willing to offer to help with this. Because um, it's, it's the drinking water. It's everyone's uh, quality of life. And so I'm sure you guys want the, the best. So um, these are my references. Now I, I can answer any questions. <laughs> kind of went through that a little quickly. And sometimes I get a little excited. But <laughs> Well, one thing I've wondered about the highway, I've been in the car wash business most of my life, and I was told way back in the day that road film is um, magnetically charged heavy metals, mm -hmm. which are toxic and aren't good for you. And road film is some rugged stuff, and it comes from the highway. Yeah, a little of it sticks to cars, but most of it just goes yep. off and goes from right off the side. So I don't know, and I'm not saying this because of the word heavy, but do they settle in the mud? Do those, or do they stay suspended in the water? Like these heavy now, metal type that, things? That's a case by case basis because um, heavy metals, um, it, it's named that because they, they tend to be um, on a molecular level a lot heavier than other things, but certain ones are more soluble. Mm -hmm. So I think that that's what has more of a factor the solubility in water rather than the actual physical weight because um, a lot of things like for salt, for example, it's very highly soluble. Once it's in the water, it's very difficult to get it out. Um, where other things, um, if you just run it through a simple like coffee filter, a lot of these things will get filtered out of the water. 
And so that's, that's mostly what it comes down to, because as the water runs off, it can go into the ground, it can continue to run off over the land. Um, if it's highly soluble, it's gonna stay in the water and it's gonna make its way into the pond, nice. where if it's something that's not really as soluble, it, as it's running off, it could just fall off and filter into the ground. So. What kind of um, salt do they use? Are you trying to use just sodium chloride? Or do they use potassium and other things too? Well, the, <clears throat> the brine that they were using mm -hmm. was a mixture of the two. Um, I don't know if they're using that anymore. The, the reason I ask is that, and I'm doing my like quick like Wikipedia research here, is there's a lot of compounds, a lot of potassium and thallium compounds, and I wonder if there's something, something there where it's binding to these pits that are on the road, mm -hmm. and then as it's being rinsed off, cool. it's just going and doing that. I mean, that's it's my. Yeah. That's, that's, this, this is more your field than mine. So. Yes. Um, also, going off that, the, like you mentioned, chloride is typically in that as well. Um, that's something I would have liked to have tested, but I just didn't have the means to. But it's just as much a concern as sodium. Mm -hmm. But, um, but um, in in Burlington. Uh, something that I want to speak about before I forgot, but they conducted a, a, a study of three specific uh, brooks that contributed to drinking water. And they, in one of them in particular, they found that over 65% of the time that they were monitoring, it was above accepted limits for salt and other contaminants mm -hmm. um, as a result of roadway runoff. But, I'm um, sure highway 89. I mean, if you look at the topography of that pond, it's at the bottom of all this. There's just on every side. Yes. There's, um, you know, natural um, stuff running into it, and man-made, and all that sort of thing. Yeah. So we're at half the allowable limit, but uh, higher than the higher than a normal limit in this area. Uh, you're you're over. You're you're closer to five times the typical concentration of other. Um, drinking water sources in the area. The allowable limit is 250 parts per million, and you're at 13, which is significantly lower. But the EPA, after doing some research, they determined that anything over 20 parts per million, you have to issue an advisory because it, there's increased risk for things like uh, high blood pressure and uh, kidney issues and stuff like that because of the higher mm. salt intake, especially with people predisposed to conditions like that. So you have to warn at 20, but 250 is the max? Yes. That's quite a stretch. Yeah. It, it's it's well, a bit of a spread, yeah. yeah. So if, if you, I imagine if you tasted something at 250 milligrams per liter, you, you would know it, it was there. there. It would be well, and so, so when we had the, the contamination of the groundwater here, yeah. I think that's I think all the tests here, like on the, the original water like mm -hmm. from the groundwater here, I think it was all above that. Hmm. Interesting. So we got that great water system installed. Yeah. The interior of the toilet tanks used to have this coat of salt you could chip on. From the frogs. Yeah. <laughs> 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 What's our expansion? Or uh, chloride. Chloride just CL, yes. Yeah. And that, that's uh, Na, sodium, and Cl chloride. That, that's what salt is. And then when it dissolves, it breaks apart. And so they, they both equally kind of um, get into the water. But uh, the equipment I had available only can test for the sodium. But it's, it's safe to assume that the chloride levels are about just as comparable because they, they come together. You can't get one without the other, typically, from this source, at least. Did you get a good grade on that? <laughs> yes. Good. <laughs> <laughs> Well, thank you very much. Very well, 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 thank you for having thank you. me. If, um, if you have any questions for me, uh, Dr. Hansen, you can have my email. I know we're going to. Is bottled water on sale this week? Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, Vermont State Rolling Loan Fund for Weather 4. That was the, we had spoken about this at the last meeting, um, and I have talked to the revolving loan fund people in charge. And basically, this, they need a commitment, um, but it's more of a placeholder. 
as they get their bond sales ready for this this, this um, session. This session, and so. I would ask if the board would authorize the chairman to sign on behalf of the town that yes, we are interested in financing through the bond bank. That's for that with that zero interest rate loan. Yeah. 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 I move that we um, authorize the chairman to sign the application for the zero interest rate bond through the Vermont bond bank. And what I didn't what I didn't say, but I think you understand it. This is the. Um, Exploratory money for our exploratory. Yeah. 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 Okay. Mm -hmm. Processes. I say. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries. So if you would sign what says borrower. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. It's only money. It's only ninety thousand dollars. <laughs> no pressure. We're all right behind. So. <laughs> Way <We're all> behind. <laughs> <laughs> I got struck by lightning when I came here today. I can't see any <laughs> words. <laughs> There's worse things I could have started. I guess so. <laughs> We're ready to go on this if you want. Okay. Thank you. I didn't date that. I'll, I'll take care of it. Um, okay. Uh, approval of licenses, permits, vouchers, and applications. Move to approve general fund accounts payable warrant number 18G21 with a check 18040 in the amount of $398.00. Also, general fund accounts payable warrant number 18G22 with checks 18041 through 18090 in the amount of $77,974.00. Also, payroll warrant number 18-22 for payroll from April 15th, 2018 through April 28th, 2018 in the amount of $38,801.27. Second. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries. Um, memo received by the from the attorney. We had talked about the um, error from the assessing department regarding the taxation of solar fields, um, and last we checked with the attorney to see if the question was, can we? Was there an easy way for us to refund the person money? The answer is no. <laughs> they have to go to the Board of Abatement. Um, certainly the Board could help them with that process um, to do that. It's, I think we all realize that we have to go by the law and we would refund that money or give them a credit on their next bill. Can the Board of Abatement initiate that? I think that they have to have a request. Yeah. Okay. But um, that was what we had last time decided to find out if we have an easy way to resolve it. And I guess it's easy now. I think we made those decisions before at those meetings. Board of Bay, I'm not sure if it was uh, the Northfield Bank or something happened there. You've had things that you've right. had to do. This is a little, and we gave them a you know, we just felt this was a clerical thing, more right. of a clerical thing, and, and it would was. be great if we could fix the clerical thing. If we were in the same tax year, that wouldn't be an issue. Right. Um, right. Not. So should we uh, reach out to the affected taxpayers and ask them to make such a request? I think that would be a great idea. Okay. Um, if you would like me to do that. I think that makes the most sense. I can do yeah. that. <laughs> Move it forward. Okay. Anything else on this date? No. Okay. Special event permit for Central Vermont Medical Center. This is a event that the medical center has every year. It's a walk around the five mile, five mile loop in Merlin Pond that they've done a number of years. Um, I have to figure out how they're going to get over that culvert, but be that as it may, you can walk on the side. You know, you can go on the side. Um, they do have insurance. The board has granted it to them in the past, and the board has waived. Um, they have, um, excuse me, the hospital has paid for the fee. 
Should we should we make them aware of that? I it's it's printed on the form. No, but I mean the uh, the road. The road. I, oh, I, I, I go I, over there, I and I'm just wondering. I don't know. It's kind of okay, but it's worse than it used to be. <laughs> I, I, I walked through there on Saturday, yeah. green up day. And it, I mean, sing, single file, you can make it through. It's not that right. big of a deal. I mean, well, if you want to go over, you can go over too. It's right, so we've done both segment. the edge. It's like the, I, I don't know. I kind of creeped over the edge, so I was. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Look, whatever. I just yeah. didn't want people unknowing that you go down there and fall on a damaged road and said you knew. Right. You didn't right. tell me. Yeah. Don't know a thing. Yeah, right. <laughs> well, we could have ridden it off with a couple of horses. Well, then you couldn't go around. I mean, right? Is the, the I, I could. I could have Tim make it so people can get could through walk. safely. What I'm saying yeah. is the area where the hole is. Yeah. We could ribbon off and put some horses in, so there'd be a walkway. It's, it's really it's, obvious. There's like gigantic <laughs> piles of gravel. Yeah. So I mean, if they wanted to try to like shimmy up the thing, yeah. th then they're going to be able to see the hole. I, so, so, I mean, it's it's pretty. But that Pretty hole obvious. is getting is getting bigger. At first, well, it's just a hole, and now it's. I could certainly yeah. have Tim go over and do something. Um, yes, it is obvious. Um, yeah. However, however, and I hate to say it, I watched some lady drive into a telephone pole at the mall today, <laughs> and. <laughs> <laughs> Enough said. Good. I, I, move, I move that we approve the uh, special event permit application for the Central Vermont Medical Center. Sorry. Any other discussion? Okay, all those hearing none, all those in favor say aye. Uh, say aye. Aye. Those opposed, motion carries. I can have you sign it, Brad. On the right, on the bottom, right above the. I'm so excited to be paid for this one. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, appointments. Um, Diamantides. Jerry Diamantides as an alternate representative to Central Vermont Internet. I was told that he would be willing to serve as an alternate to the Central Vermont Internet on the Central Vermont Internet Committee. Um, and so if you would like to appoint him as an alternate, I have prepared paperwork for the chairman to sign. So yeah, so this was just uh, something I overlooked in my excitement with my own, with my own appointment. That most of the other towns also appointed alternates, just in the event that you know I get hit by a bus, somebody else is there to, to take my place. I'll move that we appoint Jerry Diamantidis. Diamantidis, Cl close enough. Uh, as the alternate to the uh, internet board. Second. And would you further authorize the chairman to sign that their form is a little different? Please do. <laughs> yeah. And I second that too. <laughs> Any further discussion? Hearing none, those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion carries. It's required by statute. It says specifically the head of the municipal legislative body. I've read that, and that's why I, I banned and changed the form, <laughs> as you suggested. Yes. <laughs> and now we move right on to the reappointment of Jeremy Hansen and Jerry Demetides as liaisons to the Berlin Fire Department. So moved. Second. I didn't have to say it. Any, any further uh, discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? This is an everyone Carry. sign. <laughs> Oh. So, so does that mean I call you when I want a fire permit? No, you have to call the fire marshal. Mm -hmm. I, I can tell you the call. <laughs> While that's being signed, there is a new um, fire chief. Mm -hmm. Jer Jeremy Dufresne is the new chief of the Berlin Volunteer Fire Department as of last Tuesday. Mm -hmm. And the grant opportunity for bicycle and pedestrian program data? The, um, yeah. Okay, well, let me go over. Um, I'm 
VTrans has another grant opportunity. The deadline is June 22nd. And this is, I think it was two or three years ago that we completed the study down on Route 302 um, regarding, and that's when the road diet came into be and the road was upgraded. And at that time, the end of that study was with the looking forward to adding sidewalks and doing some more improvements. Um, and I don't think the board is at that point, but I could apply for the grant and get that paperwork done in the event you decided to go forward. Um, it's going to require, um, for the sidewalk, it's going to require cooperation from owners, either by easement or other, um, for a place to build the sidewalks, engineering for the sidewalks, and this is the complementary grant that went with the first one that the town had a few years ago. And since the time time goes fast, and I wanted to get your opinion and get started on preparing it. Also, if you, I mean, I know that there's been concerns with who's going to maintain this. Maybe to it. And frankly, I think it's the town that you would have to consider that if you were to go forward. If, if we were to go forward with this, the sidewalks have to be plowed in the winter? I believe that's true. I could be sh I could get some confirmation of that, but I believe if they gave you the grant, they would expect you to maintain the sidewalks. For 365 day a year yeah. access. Right. Right. So uh, thus far, we've gotten away with a fair amount of wide shoulder so that the town can just drop the wing and plow. Well, that, the state does. No, but even the town. Unless you consider an ordinance, you know, in some cities, people are responsible for the sidewalk in front of their property. It would make it even easier to put that sidewalk out there. <laughs> but make it easier to give me easement. But it wouldn't help with your easement. Yeah. yeah. You need to give me an easement, and by the way, you have to shovel it. You have to shovel it, too. Yeah. You know, the thing about that sidewalk, it's a little like the bridge to nowhere. There's nothing at either end. You've got to walk four miles to get to the sidewalk that's going to be two miles long. But it would connect something that will be eventually that, uh, I don't remember what they call it, the, the cross Vermont Trail, it's not mm -hmm. cross Vermont Trail, there's something else that... That very Montpelier connection that was started a number of years ago. So could, that was a bike path, not, yeah. a, not a uh, walking trail. So well, now we're, there's we're that uh, progressed, Brad. What's that? <laughs> we're progressed. But can you, can you walk like that? Yeah. So there you go, what do we need to Just do watch for? out for bikes, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> I do see people. Not, I want the bike path. But not on the bike lane, though, on the paved road. I don't think okay. you would want to do that. You can't do it on um, 302 on the green stripe. Because it's worn away from all the cars <laughs> driving. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, but the bike path's off the road, definitely. You yeah. can. But, all right. but on 302, you're facing the wrong. Aren't you supposed to face traffic when you're walking? But I was just yeah. saying, and I wasn't thinking about what Jeremy said. It just seems you drive all the way from Montpelier and then you hit that section, park your car, and you can walk back and forth. And you'd have to do the same from Gary. Right. But if it eventually Good is encouraged development, right? going to go all the way. The very Montpelier was pretty well developed. Not a lot more to do it up there. There is a lot of, I mean, there are a lot of people going back and forth on that bike trail, surprisingly. Since I live there, I see it all the mm -hmm. time. Yeah. So we are talking, we are, just for clarification, we are talking about a sidewalk on a very long road. Yep. Yeah. So as somebody who in my young years didn't have a car and worked at Kentucky Fried Chicken when I was 18 years old, I walked the very long road um, every day. And it is dangerous. Mm. And for the <laughs> folks who don't have a car, um, you know, a sidewalk would have been nice for me when I was walking in the dark. Mm -hmm. I guess my question, yeah. the, the maintenance is a question, mm -hmm. because we don't have the means to take care of the sidewalk right now. No, even like additional equipment. Yeah. And secondly, this grant 
is for the planning. Yes. But it's not for the construction. No, that's, and we learned from the last, there were estimates given on the cost of the construction at the last a few different scenarios mm -hmm. from our last study, and I don't have that in front of me, but it was, it was significant. Yeah, but yeah. I mean, even if we got the maximum grant for the construction, we were still looking at, what, 200000 That's what I'm saying. No. Um, Without you money. might be able to access, you do have that bike. Is it a bike path and grip? Reserve account, but like has fifty thousand in it. But some of that was some of that was dedicated to that bridge across the. We uh, we did you donated um, a sum of money from that fund to the the uh, to I think Vermont, that was Vermont across the Vermont Trail. Yeah, yeah. Um, and that has happened. So the, that was done last. So what the battle with the? We have about fifty thousand left. Okay. We're only 150,000 short. So, you know. <laughs> and nobody's shoveled it yet. <laughs> well, I mean, the other, the, other, the other argument there is, I mean, not only do you need a machine to clean it, but you need an operator to run it. Right. And, you know, with the, with even now, I mean, in the winter, with plowing every, every snowstorm, the road crew is already tied up. Mm -hmm. I'm just thinking North, Northfield, they've got uh, Route 12 there. They've got sidewalks downtown, and they've got, and they, they have the equipment to do it, but it, it does require a lot more <coughs> mm -hmm. careful maintenance because when they plow, it goes up the sidewalks, and then they have to go and they have to mm -hmm. do something with it from there. You know, I can't help but think, you know, FEMA's putting out new elevation levels. There's all kinds of problems about developing areas in the floodplain. So why are we spending a lot more money to attract people to try to develop the floodplain? It's a little bit like the Bay Area in San Francisco, you know, is, there is going to be an earthquake that destroys it and everyone's running to live there. <laughs> so here we are in a problematic area. We're developing the upper echelons of Berlin with the mall, the city center and all that stuff. And we're throwing millions down there to watch it go underwater one day. Hmm. Well, I think the the the, pl the planning I saw for the sidewalk <clears throat> it was going to be on the opposite West side, side. Of, opposite side of the road right. as the um, the malls and uh, the uh, shopping centers right. and whatnot. Right. But it's still attracting people to narrow bread where they ended up because they could. Mm -hmm. They're down there. I mean, I'm just thinking if we were developing Berlin. You know, for economical purposes, is there a better place to start spending than what we already have? You know, is it better to keep spending our money in a safer area? As, and I don't mean traffic-wise or darkness, but from the natural elements. And all that may be coming our way, scientists say, in the next decade or two, you know. Well, at the same time, you can't very well forsake what's where, there. Yeah. There's a difference, I think, be, between forsaking and encouraging. Yeah. You know? But. Come back to the fact we don't have a slide about flower, anybody's not. <laughs> <laughs> right. I mean, just uh, my perspective is, um, you know, the workforce and people who, who can't get back and forth to work. Right. <clears throat> it makes sense to me, and we're putting a sidewalk on a bridge that goes to no sidewalk again. That's sort of, I'm just viewing that on a bigger scale. But then again, I mean, in today's age, um, we have a lot more bus service than we did years ago, right? And, you know, the, the bus route along the Barry Mount Pillar Road is fairly well used, I think. It, it is. Mm -hmm. I think so, too, with the buses. So, I think if you, it's great that we get a study, but I don't think there's any reason to use the study if we know that we can't afford to build the sidewalk. So, I mean, we, we have the study of where these things are going to go. I, I think this is more the actual, like, no joke engineering, right? Yeah, and I just, I guess what I'm looking for, if if you don't think it's something we're going to ever pursue, why would you put time? So I think that the, the, the best way that I could, and I'm going by memory, but I think that, that to build this sidewalk on the very Mount Clay Road was going to cost something like $4 million. And we were going to have to pay $250,000 of the $4 million if we got a grant after it was engineered. 
Right. Okay, so that's a year's budget, a whole year. Yeah. Yeah. So, so and that's before we figure out how we're going to maintain it. And we know we don't have the equipment to maintain it. We know we're going to have a person to run the equipment if we had the equipment to maintain it. So I'm just saying, as as a general rule, would we spend this kind of money? So I have it here. Um, they said it was going to be one. Hold on. Then a couple scenarios. One point four million for all five segments. And the other thing too is we could do just a, a, one of the five segments they've they've identified. There's the one down by the um, Ames Plaza, which would that would cover the bridge, and take it down to Midway Ave. I think that's the one that goes past the uh, bowling alley. It's right before the bowling alley. Um, and there's another segment that goes. I I, I can't really tell where uh, where it is, but it goes up to the um, other bus stop. Yeah, so there's, there's, there's five segments, and then there's one that goes from Berlin State Highway. The first one goes from Berlin State Highway to the town line. Mm -hmm. So there's five, five different segments that, uh, that could be done there, and they each have their own individual costs. So, so I have a question. Um, would the state be willing to allocate money toward that? And, and they, they what, this is part of what we're talking about is us applying for the state to help us pay to do this. Right. So a little background on me. Um, I I have a degree in prevention and community development, and I worked um, several years with folks on reach up and community um, developing work, jobs for them, work placements, and helping them create resumes. Um, Transportation was a huge issue for for folks who were on reach up um, and people who were working minimum wage jobs because they have families and they can't afford registration insurance, ma maintaining a vehicle, that sort of thing. And so, so that's where my thinking is coming from. Mm -hmm. um, working with these folks for a long time and and problem solving issues. And I totally yeah. support that. Yeah. It's just whether we can afford to do it. Right, that. exactly. So that's why I was wondering if C I funding think, would be a, would be helpful. I think when we, that two fifty that we were gonna have to spend, I believe, was after eighty percent state funding. That's what I'm saying. So and that's before we buy equipment or have anybody to maintain the site. Because it would probably be at least a, a half time employee in the winter managing that anytime we have a snowstorm. So we apply every year for state funding. We're trying to get money to fix Fisher Road in front of the mental hospital, the hospital, the Berlin Mall. Uh, you know, we, we don't have any money to fix that road. So all I'm saying is, would we be able to allocate this funding? And if we could, that'd be great, but I don't see that we could. So I'm asking, do we go forward with the engineering if we don't think that we can afford to do right. the project. That's all I'm asking. Do we want to take a smaller bite out of it? Well, again, you if you do that, Jeremy, you still have a shorter side of walking away. Mm -hmm. Well, we're still going to have a, we're going to have a longer sidewalk to nowhere because it's not, <laughs> doesn't connect to a Montpelier sidewalk. Yet. Well, no, I guess they do have a walk, a place to walk on the Montpelier side, don't they? Yeah. Well, the, the, I think Montpelier, their sidewalks stop at the uh, Form Note Four. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but they but that might convince them to extend it then. Mm -hmm. Right. I wonder if we worked in collaboration with Barry and the player. Or is this something we need to look at as more of a strategic, like next five years thing? Like we look at doing one every two, every one of these segments every two years, and then we can see, you know, what is the actual workload look like for clearing just the segment between you know, the, the town line past the wayside up to uh, Walker. So how long are engineering studies good for before they go? I mean, they're going to, I would assume if we did this engineering that we'd get a new budget. Yeah. Yeah, I would, I would, I would say, and I think probably what I would suggest, I, I don't think you're ready to make a decision tonight, but, um, Maybe, why don't you let me look at some of the sections and come up with a few scenarios of how it might yeah, go forward. And I'd like to re-look at that 
original uh, to see if they have uh, money allocated to buy the easements. That was, I, it was in I, I, I believe they did, but I'm not sure how accurate they are. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, the easements will widen out the right of way for 302. Correct. Right. And because of the size of the road we're talking about, we're talking about easements in the Dealership. car dealerships and Burger King. Yeah. the hospital yeah. properties and so on. And uh, if they're going to lose parking, mm -hmm. mid state dog. Yeah, this isn't going to happen <laughs> that easily, is all I'm saying. Well, I think even even the road diet was pretty much poo -poo. I, I think it just got stuff through. Uh, the state was here, and they said 70% of Berlinton walked, wasn't happy. So we're going ahead. And, and so we're doing it. <laughs> 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 we're leaving the lights up. <laughs> we're right. We're the government. We're here to help you. <laughs> Funding of segments one through four is um, 1218000 and then that's the, the, the fifth one was another um, 165. So that was total construction cost? Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So total project cost was, in, was indeed um, I just, so I think going straight, straight through it. Um, I'm just going to put this in Excel so I can <laughs> deal with it. Sorry. Well, don't lot. send it to me. <laughs> 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 Well, it's coming down to whether or not the, we as the town feel that the, the sidewalk is affordable. And realistically, what the usage would be for the amount of money that was expended. Right. I'm not, I mean, personally, even if you had a sidewalk that went from, from the Montpelier line all the way to the Barry line and they had extended their sidewalks to meet it, how many people are actually going to use it? Total project cost all five segments, 1487000 And that includes right-of-way, management, inspection, design, and contingency. Hmm. So 280 or 20% of that would be <clears throat> So, I, I, and the, what they're saying, the, the funding mechanism, there is something called the uh, Bicycle Pedestrian Grant. Is that what we're looking at? That's the one. Ten percent minimum local right. match. And their recommendation here, if a partial award is received, the town can reduce the length of the project accordingly. So you apply for so you could ninety percent of all of it. Big big chunk. <clears throat> and then if they say, you know what, we're only gonna give you half of that. Right. Is there is there a deadline for that? June twenty second. Okay. Kind of a meeting. I mean, I, 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 I like the idea, but I'm, I'm, I'm torn because the maintenance is going to be a problem. Mm -hmm. I totally, I totally see what you're saying about people will use it. They'll definitely use it. But on the other hand, Pete, I'm when, when you said that's, you just, I just think about, yeah, the, the floodplain down there. Is that, is that where we ought to focus? Pretty mm -hmm. My only thought is, let's say that, let's say we get nine percent of all the money. So we spent 150,000. We spent 70 on a sidewalk plow and salter. We hire somebody to do it, but we can't fix our roads because we've got, got a culvert budget. and a road that's yeah. broken. Another culvert. We got Fisher Road with the hospital and the mall and the city center up high in the high drive. And we've got a paving budget annually of twelve dollars. <laughs> no, you're up to thirteen. Okay. No, that's 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 all I'm trying to balance in my mind. That's all. right. Well, I'll go through a couple scenarios here. Okay, can I have a motion to table? Motion to table. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. But do you do that, Dan, and have it for the next meeting? Yes. Okay, thank you very much. Um, approval of select board minutes 042 uh, 2018 and 04 16 2018. <clears throat> Move to 
approve the minutes for the Monday, April 2nd, 2018 meeting as presented. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Well, you weren't, mm -hmm. you weren't there, so you're going to stay. Oh, I'm staying. <laughs> Motion carries and motion on the 4 16 2018 meeting. Move to approve the April 16th meetings uh, minutes as printed. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Were you not there? No. Oh, yes, I was. Yeah, yeah I think you were there. That one was yeah, one before, yeah. Yeah. I had a definite one. Yeah. Sorry. Let mm me -hmm. mm -hmm. take the picture so we'll know whether we were here or not. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to start that. Yeah. You were here. Okay. Uh, town administrator report, Nina? Yes. Um, well, first of all, it's been a pretty good week. Um, we did receive the Fisher Road grant. Um, so we did. We did. This is that good. That was pretty pretty exciting. So we are going to go ahead and put out paving bids for Fisher Road. Um, and obviously, Fisher Road is we need traffic control and we need a lot of special considerations there. Does that include our signals? Does that include what? It was our signals. No, it doesn't. Um, I'd like the signals. We had that in the budget. Good. And I'd like them to be done. Tim's got the signal man giving us estimates on the signals. Um, I had a visit from Jim Carrion from the league, and you remember, oh, I think it was last summer, I brought you a suggestion of a policy for transitional work for workers comp. And at that time, you thought it was a little too, it painted us in a corner. I've, I've loosened it up a little, and I've worked with Jim on it, and I'll be bringing it to you at your next meeting um, because he's suggesting that it would really help us as far as the workers' comp expense if we had a transitional program. Obviously, you can't offer someone, we don't have 40 hours of work each week for certain things, but there are some things that people can do. Um, also, uh, Jim is encouraging us to get a safety committee, and we really need to do this pull together and have staff on it and management on it, um, and that is going to be happening um, again, and that's will be to help us with our workers' comp obligation, as well as to you know keep employees safe and so forth. Um, and then the other grant, as I mentioned earlier, was the Merrill Lake grant for the structure. We did not receive one for Richardson Road, and I can't complain because I've gotten almost $500,000 out of them in the last week, so I guess that's pretty good. <laughs> but Richardson Road doesn't have the issues that Merrill Lake has. That's right. That's right. And we may find that it's got, I think that was estimated not to get the exact fee number, 200 something thousand to do that. And, but, so we are having the engineering done on that as well. But, so we got two out of three grants. So, I was, I was it's not bad. About that. No. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so that's really all I had to share with you on that. Okay, thank you, Dana. Um, round table? Pete? I think I'm set. I'm good. I don't know about anything. Oh, <laughs> if you, if anything you want to discuss with the board right now, it's off the record. Well, not off the record, but it's not going to be voted on or anything. Out of the agenda. Oh. <clears throat> yeah. Anything else, Dana? Um, the liquor board, where you're going to be moved to recess the select board and community liquor board. Okay. okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 We have one application from Bombastic Industries <laughs> doing business as the Blue Donkey. They're located in Stowe. They are catering a party at the fitness competition at 654 Granger Road. 
at the fitness center uh, in June fitness. second. Um, and I have no reason to suggest that you not approve it. Move to approve the catering license for the first and fitness event. Sorry. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion carries. Move to adjourn the liquor control board and reconvene the select board. Anything with executive session today? David? I have no executive session. Move to adjourn. Sorry. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye